Hello everyone and welcome to Harv's World for another episode of Pirate's Bay Farm. Big things afoot today. Big, big things afoot. We're going to get to that in just a second, but first I would like to welcome Sean Doty, Sirstis, Bob Ramsey, CNK TV, David Thomas, John Deerman, Joe Cornell, Ernest Richmond, Jack Splite, B Roach 68, or R, no, I'm sorry, R Broach 68, Jovica Kozik, 98 Dime, RJ Turner, Min Hyun, Havoc, and now Kawa to the channel. Welcome to Harv's World. Welcome. So, as I said, big things are afoot and a lot to get done today. Because there's always a lot to get done today. First thing is, my aunt's horses have paid off and we've had a horse. <laughs> a colt, a foal, whatever you want to call it. These horses, or this one of these horses, have given birth, and we now have two or three horses instead of two. Now, this is a breeding pasture here, so I need to move one of these horses over to the main pasture. So I'm all set up to do that. And in honor of my aunt who left me this farm to begin with, I have named the new horse Anne. So, I'm going to move Anne over. There she is right there, Anne. And what's interesting about this breeding pasture is, is that when your horses do finally breed, they don't breed a horse that's at its base level. This horse came out at a value of almost $26,000. Now we know that we can get that horse up to 50,000 if we hang on to it for a while, feed it up, trade it, or not trade it, train it, exercise it, and that should only take a few days, so that's going to help the farm. And that'll also make room in the breeding pasture so that those horses can get busy and do what they need to do <laughs> if you know what I'm saying anyway so I'm gonna move Ann down into the main pasture she's gonna have plenty of room to roam around and I just need to swing right in here and unfortunately for whatever reason It wouldn't allow me to just ride in over here and put her in. I had to actually use the animal trailer to make that happen. So, well, that's that's where we're at with that. It does require moving the horse with a trailer. So luckily we had one on the farm. My aunt prepared for that. And there's going to be some changes around the farm today. Now, a few days have passed since we last met here on Pirate's Bay. And as you can see, I've had some work done on my pickup. And those boys put that logo right on the side of my truck. So that is awesome. Totally awesome. It costs um, about $1,500 to get that put on there. But hey, as far as I'm concerned, it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. I've got my brand and I'm going to show it off to the world. I want everybody to know that Pirate's Bay Farm is a force to be reckoned with. And that is some rough action right through there. I might have to fix that one of these days. Okay. Next thing I want to get done, I want to clean up around here. And I need a place to repair my vehicles. I don't have one, and that's going to be my goal for the next few minutes. I've got all these old junk cars sitting around here, and I want to get rid of them. So, I just happen to have a method of taking care of that these days. Boom. Junky car gone. Here's another nasty one. Boom. Junky car gone. Outstanding. Now, it doesn't really do much for me over there, but it does make the place look a little bit nicer. Don't need all these old boards laying around, so 
Boom. Get rid of them. Get them out of here. I don't want them. They look crummy. Now, I don't know what this thing is. I don't really care what it is. All I know is it's beat up, broken down, and in my way. So, get it out of here. Get it out of here. Go away, away. I do not want you here. You, old conveyor belt. Bye-bye. So long. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. <laughs> yeah. So. We are just going to keep getting rid of this junk sitting around. Why? Because there's no purpose for it. It's not like it looks good. I mean, really. There we go. Now, the best part about this right here is I can get right in here and I'm going to install some uh, some workshop space. If I can find it. Yeah, because I always have a massive list here. Yeah, I think this is going to run me about $15,000, but God knows it's going to be worth it because I'll have a place a place to work on my junk about like so and I'm gonna stick that right in where that I guess it was a crusher just like so and boom I now have a workshop on the farm it doesn't even require a separate building I can just pull my equipment right up here onto the platform and get it all fixed up and repaired. And God knows with Field 44, it beats my equipment to death. So, that was an important step. Oh, and while I'm thinking about it here, that poor horse is going to need some... Uh, poor Ann is going to need some food and such. And this little truck right here will be the perfect, perfect truck for the job. As I crash it into the silo. It's alright. If I can find what I'm looking for, because... See, I've got 52,000 liters of hay now. That is awesome. And I would bet for one horse, 2,000 liters is going to be perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, in field 44, I did get, man, those two little cedars are killing me. And I'll go into that here in just a second. But I did get oil seed radish put in. And man, that field just takes ages. Yeah, that might not have been quite enough. That's all right. I better throw on some water here, too. There we go. Here you go, Ann. There's some water, some oats, and straw, and we'll be all set for Ann. Anyway, I did get the oilseed radish in, and I've got Big Boy over there right now with a worker cultivating that in to give that fertilized state that first fertilizer I, I gotta do something about it. double planting that field is also killing me oil seed radish wait for it to grow cultivate it back in and it's such a big field I mean all of this takes so much time so I'll sort that out I will get that sorted straw that's what I wanted was some straw We'll get Ann some oats and she'll be all set for a while.
Not enough hay, too much straw. <laughs> That's the way it goes sometimes. Yeah, well. And of course, we'll get back into our discussion on pirates today. In fact, I'll start it off with this one. How much did it cost a pirate to get his ears pierced? Uh, about a buck an ear. <laughs> I know, dad jokes, right? <laughs> Always been one of my favorites, though. I can't help it. I think today we'll just uh, we'll just look at some pirate trivia, find out what are what are some interesting facts just about the life of pirates to begin with. Hmm. Better to have too much than not enough, as I found out with the hay. Because, you know, the movies, TV, books. Actually, it was really books that began all of the pirate lore and all of the mythology that, you know, we, we uh, associate with pirates now. And a lot of it's just plain not true. But it's fun. You know, and that's what we want from our pirates. We want them to be fun. That's why we loved Pirates of the Caribbean so much with Johnny Depp, because it was fun. And one of the things that I actually discovered in, uh, in looking up some pirate information was that there actually was a pirate named Jack Sparrow. But he was not a pirate of the Caribbean. He was a pirate of the Mediterranean. So that's something else to keep in mind, too. Now, we're pretty much going to focus on on the pirates that we know, the pirates that we love. Um, from the stories that we're familiar with. But there were pirates all over the world. And the Mediterranean, in the Middle East, piracy was huge. Um... There's a well-known pirate haven in, I want to say, Ireland. And it was run by a woman named Grace O'Malley. So, you know, pirates, because we know pirates of the Caribbean or the West Indies as they were known sometimes. Um, I better give these horses some more water, too. Here you go, guys. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. Do your jobs now. Okay, well, we won't watch. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, there were uh, pirates all over the world. So that's something to keep in mind, really. Now, the other thing, oh, this field's going to be, uh, he's knocking this out pretty quick. I'm going to have to go back in and touch up, of course, but he's doing a good job over here. I still had my cedars out here. Because I expect to have to uh, to plant up this field again. But, that reminds me of something else. I have placed an order with the shop. I said, look, I've only got two small cedars. They're killing me. They are absolutely killing me. I need something. And so, they called me back late yesterday afternoon. It must have been, gosh, almost 6 o'clock. And uh, they said they thought they just might have something for me. And I could stop by today and pick it up. And I said, perfect, great. I'll come down and take a look. If I like it, I'll take it home with me. So I'm going to have to make a run down to the shop one more time today. Hopefully to solve my seeding woes at least a little bit now I think I can't decide if I should hang on to these little cedars because it's a possibility they could still come in handy I just don't know but I did want to come over and take a look at this because look at that 
The trees are starting to grow up a little bit. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Which in turn reminds me, I need to... Now, I'm spending some money here. I feel like it's important to spend it, but I have to keep in mind... Hey, look at all those trees out there. I hope they pay off. Um, I have to keep in mind that I have got some goals here. And the first one is, I need to buy that plot of land to set up the beginning of my rum production and get a sawmill working. Now I've got some time because those trees are still young, but like I said, I am going to need to get that land and get my sawmill up and running. So that's going to be important. Just for starters, and that's just the beginning. Now some of you might be wondering, how is he going to produce rum? And I'm going to clue you into this, that as the farm gets up and running, I am going to start adding a focus on global company. Now if you don't know much about global company, well, Keep watching because this is going to be the place to learn. It's not going to be this episode, but it is coming. And there is a lot that Global Company can do to add to your farming experience. So, with that said, remember my old cotton baler here? Yeah. Yeah. That, that guy. Which also reminds me. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Man, these guys stop for nothing. Nope, it doesn't remind me. I was thinking of something else. Oh, that's what it was. So I need to get this down to the cotton field because the cotton field is ready to harvest again. That is definitely coming. <clears throat> Make sure this head drops down. There it goes. I forgot this head takes forever to hit the ground. Yeah, that first cotton harvest, it was okay. But remember, it was all just littered with weeds and junk, so... This one should be quite a bit better. I don't even remember if it was fully fertilized or not. This field definitely was. We'll see how it turns out. If it turns out good, we might just stick with the cotton on this field. This last time, I think we made about 75,000 on cotton. Gotta remember, I've got 6,000 liters left over from that. So, we'll see. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on getting the job done. Let's see it in a little bit. The last of the cotton right here. This is it. Coming up to the end. I've got about. Ooh, 2,400 liters left. There's nothing in the baler at the moment. And I can tell you right now, at least for the time being, the cotton harvesting days are over, and I'm going to tell you why. I'll be happy to tell you why. In fact, I need to tell you why. <laughs> now, this is a cool mod. I like it. I've had good luck with Connect modding in the past. These guys make great mods. But there's an, a problem with this one that I don't know how to overcome. I don't think it's me. I've tried every single thing that I can think of to make this work properly. Oh, that's one thing I needed. Now, the bailing on this is variable capacity, which is nice. You would expect that from a cotton harvester. We're going to run a 2,000 
liter bale to try to use up most of the last of this cotton. I'm not going to get all of it in there, but this is going to be a 2,000 liter bale. Now I'm going to show you the problem that I'm having. And look at all those bales sitting out there. So you can see I have tried multiple times to get this issue resolved and it, it's just not working. So, you know, this cotton harvester is cool. I like it a lot. The fact that it, it pipes out, the fact that it's loose cotton going into it, I like it. The baler. Very clever idea. You know, you fire it up, it packs down the cotton, etc etc the problem is and watch it not do it this time of course it's not going to do it this time <laughs> this is the first time quite literally that i've been able to pull out from a bale every other bale that i have put through this thing i've had to manually get out and I'll be honest, I, super strength was the only way. Because what ends up happening is it's too tall and it wedges on the end of this compactor when the doors open. So with that said, we ended up with about 44,000 liters of cotton. But the cotton equipment is going away now i originally then you know, the first time i harvested cotton i was down on the edge of the field down here i thought oh the ground is rough it's not level enough we can sort this problem out so i just let it go <clears throat> thought well i'll use elizabeth's driveway that'll uh, fix the problem it's nice and smooth up there nope same problem so I will get back into cotton harvesting when a solution presents itself. I'm going to talk to Elizabeth about that because I'll bet she knows somebody. She knows everybody. But for the time being, this cotton equipment will be going away. I originally thought it was bale capacity, you know, like it was making different size bales depending on how much you had in there. That wasn't the case because I started with 10,000 liter bales and knocked it down to 8 and then knocked it down to 6. And, I mean, okay, that one was a 2,000 liter bale. It worked this time, but I can guarantee you the next time it won't. I have fought with it too much. I'm not fighting with it anymore. Okay, that bloody baler is gone, gone, gone. I do need to get <clears throat> those bales moved out, but more importantly, I need to get that big field planted, and look at this. Very interesting. Now, this, this, uh, hmm. Well, I think I know what to do here. Keep your fingers crossed. Mm, yeah. Okay. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to grab this. do that oh there we go that is quite the um, conglomeration let me tell you okay so oh, hang on a second it's Elizabeth calling Elizabeth how you doing? <laughs> Dinner? Sure. I'll be over. 
Hopefully it's something good. Oh, I like surprises. Okay. Hey, I got a question for you. So you you know I've been uh, working cotton a little bit, right? Right. Well, it turns out that my cotton equipment um, is really more trouble than it's worth. And that's putting it mildly. Yeah, just... Man, your drivers on this island are, uh, are reckless. I mean, anyway. So I'm getting, I'm selling it off. I'm getting rid of it. Um, I, I know they're a little more liberal about cotton type stuff on the island here, but I don't want to spend a fortune to keep cotton working. Do you know anybody who might have some? Huh. Really? <laughs> that's interesting. Well, that's one way to get the job done, I suppose. But he's getting out. He's retiring, basically. Okay. Well, if he's got something, I mean, all I really need at the moment, I hope anyway, is... Uh, some stuff to work cotton with, so... Yeah, I'll, I'll... If he's got something, I will definitely take a look at it. I'm definitely interested. Because... Yeah, my equipment just... It's not cutting it. It's not doing what I need it to do. So... Okay. Well, I've got a couple more hours here at least and then say seven o'clock sound good sounds good I'll see you then bye <laughs> she always knows somebody always knows somebody anyway you know one thing that we haven't discussed haven't talked much about today yet is pirates and I said we were going to talk about some pirate uh Just general pirate stuff, you know, um, pirate trivia, if you will. One thing that I found very interesting, I've known this for a long time, but my uh, my look into pirates here on Pineapple Bay has uh, reminded me of it, is that uh, eye patches. So, you know, pirates have a tradition of wearing eye patches, of course, and, you know, we make good fun in fact there's a joke what do you have when you've got eight arms eight legs and eight eyes the punchline is eight pirates so pirates are known for losing limbs and losing eyes and all of that happy stuff <laughs> that we traditionally associate with pirates well The truth of the matter is, <clears throat> that's not exactly the case. Now, of course, they, they were fighters a lot. But, eye patches were worn not because of lost eyes. And, in fact, they make good fun of the pirate with the, the lost eye in, in Pirates of the Caribbean. With the, the guy who's got the, the fake eye and he keeps losing it. But eye patches were worn over one eye so that pirates could keep their night vision. And I don't need this up here. I need it back in field 44. So how it works is, I hope I can swing this right back around. Oh, come on, baby. And I need a tractor. It's going to require a bigger tractor, I'm sure. So what they would do, they put a patch over one eye, and of course, you know, they're fighting on deck, the sun's out, whatever. And they have to go below decks to root out uh, people who are hiding or stuff like that. And so what they would do is 
take the eye patch and flip it to their other eye. So one eye had been in the dark, the other eye had been in the light. And the eye in the dark could now see below decks because... Gotta go grab my tractor. Because I think I'm going to need the big one for this. So that was really the reason for eye patches, so that they would have one eye for for light and another eye for uh, seeing in darkness. So that was pretty cool. Pirates were not stupid. They were not stupid at all. They actually um, were fairly clever, a lot of them. Yeah, they were they were reasonably bright sometimes. Man, this thing sounds like a beast when it starts up. I'm just going to drop this uh, cultivator off right there. I'm going to need it over on another, or to get my other field ready with no cotton in it. But, basically what I've got here is a rig. It's four cedars that will run side by side they each run about 60 horsepower so I need at least 240 horsepower to make this all work and setting this up is going to take a little bit so to start with I just want to pull this thing out of the way drop it off What I'm going to try to do now is just peel these off one at a time, set them in place, so the general idea is bring it around, now I could use these individually, no problem, which might actually be an option at some point and makes me wonder if I even need to keep the old old cedars now since these do run on their own but I'm just going to drop this right here there's one two three four we got it Woo. So now we need to make sure they're all open. There we go. Oh, this thing. The tractor with the chainsaw motor. But I've already got the seeds here, so why would I go buy more? Now one problem with a rig like this, I'm going to tell you right now, is you better take the extra time to make sure that you've got all these different cedars set to the same crop. Because uh, <laughs> if you don't, good luck harvesting it. You're pretty much just going to end up... Um... Oh, I missed the first one. There it goes. Apparently the target on these is a little off kilter too. There we go. Now I'm too close. Oh, you can tell. It's the end of a long day. End of a very long day.
Come on. There. Now the question is, what am I going to put in? I need a cash crop. That's just the, the truth of it. I need a good cash crop. And they keep thinking I'm wanting fertilizer. It's not going to be wheat, let me tell you. Um, how about... Because we just did oats, right? Um, yeah, I like the idea. Canola. Canola it is. Canola there. Canola there. Yep, yep, yep. Looks like we've got canola in all of them. All right, now we got to turn each one of these on. They are running. I get set up over here. Yeah, about like so. That looks pretty good. Now, the question I have is, can I lower all these at the same time? That looks like they all went down. We're going to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's working. <laughs> it's working. No more three and a half meter seeding this giant field. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm missing the edge over here. Oh, well. Thank God for small favors. Oh yeah, so back to pirates. Um, another interesting thing, at least about life on pirate ship, or ship in general, I think, but this would also apply to pirates, is that it was bad luck to whistle on board. No whistling. So, you know, any of those annoying people that uh, like to whistle which I might be one, but don't tell anybody. You won't ever hear it. Um, that was considered very bad luck. No whistling. And no women. Women were bad luck on a ship. They were not allowed. Pirates are very superstitious, by the way. I guess if you put your life on the line all the time for an occupation, you, you might, uh, might start to believe in some superstition also. But be that as it may, yeah, they were very superstitious. And, you know, one of the common misconceptions about pirates is that they were always just spoiling for a fight. They always just wanted to get in and get dirty. But that's not the case either. That's doing a real nice, really nice job, actually. It's a hassle to get set up, but once you do... It just cruises right along. And the price was right. And that was all brand new equipment. I mean, they brought it out of mothballs apparently because it still looks kind of old, but it had never been used before. So, very cool. Very cool indeed. And it offers me some flexibility because I could pull one of these off and use it. That means I can get rid of my other two small cedars. So... Yeah, that is excellent. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yeah. No whistling, no women. 
apparently hygiene on ships and this could be based you know on just ships in general also but I imagine pirate ships were some of the worst hygiene was was pretty awful <laughs> so they say you got a bunch of guys on board a ship um, you can't really bathe in salt water because frankly salt water will do some serious damage over time if you use it too often and you had a limited supply of water on board the ship and you needed to keep that as long as you could so people had something to drink and didn't die of uh, dehydration now yes it's a popular truth that pirates love their rum no doubt about that but there were three drinks on board there was water there was beer and there was rum a lot of rum and what would end up happening is first and foremost they would drink the water because you can only store water at least the way they had the ability to store it for so long before it would go stagnant and bad water does go bad water will spoil over time especially when you have no way to control bacteria like you know we chlorinate our water now but they didn't have such conventions back then so they would drink the water first so it wouldn't go bad so there is no way to bathe per se then they would drink the beer it has a higher water content and is more likely to go bad and then last they would drink the rum although while i can see that being the truth of it sailors in general were uh, were permitted or given as part of their uh, daily ration some rum so i guess you know that would help wash down some stagnant water <laughs> i don't know for sure and one thing I, I find particularly interesting about pirates is that they operated in a democracy pirate captains were not necessarily pirate captains because um they had been captains for a long time or had gained a reputation i mean i guess to some degree that would be true but there was no guarantee that they were ever going to be captain of a ship because frankly you had to be elected and you could be voted out you could easily be voted out as captain so there was that level of democracy the next level was the fact that pirates did not work for wages every ship had its own set of rules and you know whether you were a pirate on that ship or not determined whether you liked the set of rules on that ship and part of that was well how do i get paid well those rules would lay out specifically how much of the spoils you would receive for whatever your position was on the ship now a lot of people have said and i'm sure to some degree this is true that you know everybody shared equally in the spoils and that's definitely a possibility but i can't imagine that at least to some degree captains didn't receive um a larger share than uh say your average deckhand but at the same time they're all putting their lives on the line to uh, to capture these ships so yeah who am i to say i'm just looking back and marveling at the uh, ways these guys were reasonably progressive in their viewpoints in fact a lot of pirates were simply pirates because they didn't like the way society was going which isn't necessarily uncommon from the sentiment a lot of people have today but these guys chose to uh, go try to make 
their own type of civilization. Sort of an organized anarchy, if you will. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't work out. Civilized society finally brought them down, but... A lot came out of it. At least a lot for a lot of people back then. Now, one other thing that you may not know, but once you think about it for a minute, makes complete sense. One of the most important positions on the ship. One of one thing a ship positively, absolutely positively could not do without. And right now you're thinking something like, well, the captain, obviously. Cook. Gotta have people to be able to cook. Um, a doctor, a surgeon, something like that. Dispense medicines. Keep people from being sick. No. None of those. One of the most important positions on the ship was carpenter. If you were a carpenter, you held a place of high regard on the ship. Because... Have you ever seen any pirate battles? Have you ever seen... I mean, in the movies they do, you know, especially with all the effects they can do these days, you know, amazing jobs of showing exactly what happens when um, a lead cannonball, or 12, comes smashing through the railings on on a deck of a, a wood ship. Well, anytime there was a problem with the ship, and it wasn't necessarily always combat, I mean... You're in the harsh seas, so that water could do a lot of damage also. Well, it was up to the carpenter to keep that ship afloat. And if you were good at your job, you were held in very high regard. So, learning carpentry would make you a, a blessed member of the crew, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> I don't know if blessed is quite the right word, but... You get the gist. Anyway. Now that we can finally get it done, and done without taking ten years, I'm going to finish putting canola in this field. I'm also going to, uh, well, I've got to meet uh, Elizabeth for dinner here in about an hour. But sometime very soon I'm going to take that cotton harvester down to the shop, see what they'll give me for it. Hopefully a nice chunk of change. Because it is a good harvester. I just couldn't live with the baler. With that said, I'm going to keep plugging away here on Pirate's Bay Farm. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, do me a favor. Remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care. <laughs>